A couple of weeks ago, I began rereading the Bionicle G1 story using a guide that I found online. Since it goes in chronological order and I'm not too far into it yet, I've been coming across many of the early events that shaped the Matoran universe and made it what it is today. Principal among these was the creation and training of likely the most famous Toa team in all the Matoran universe, the Toa Mata. In this episode of Bionicle Lore Explained, we'll explore the members, origins, and purpose of this team, as well as uncovering the mystery of how they washed up on the golden shores of Mata Nui. Before we get started, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to get notified when I upload. I not only make lore videos such as this, but I also make mocks and I'm working on my own Bionicle fan story. You can also consider joining my Discord server where you can discuss anything Bionicle, get updates on my channel, and share your creations. Now let's get started with the video. Our story begins on the island of Artaka, 100,000 years before the Reformation of Spheres Magna. Unlike the majority of Toei heroes, the Toa Mata were never Matoran. Having first been created as Toa by the being Artaka, the Toa Mata were then transferred to the island of Daxia to be awakened. On Daxia, the Toa were awakened in the Order of Mata Nui's fortress with no clue to who or what they were. However, they were quickly informed by a mysterious voice that unbeknownst to them was the Order's leader and the first Toa, Helrix. For the first time, these Toa would learn the names of Tahu, Gali, Lewa, Kopaka, Onua, and Pohatu, as well as their destiny to save Mata Nui in a time of great peril. In the coming years, these Toa would be trained by the Order of Mata Nui to prepare them for a worst case scenario. For if the Great Spirit was ever struck down, it would be this team's duty to restore him. Through their training, they'd learn how to use their Kenobi, control their elemental powers, and perhaps most importantly, teamwork. An Order member named Hydraxon was given the task of training the Toa Mata. Not only would he teach them how to fight, but Hydraxon also created exercises to test the team's synergy and force them to get comfortable working together. Hydraxon would often fight one-on-one -on -one with the Toa, requiring them to use their Toa tools, elemental abilities, and mask powers all to defeat him in combat. As their trainer, Hydraxon would treat these combat exercises similar to a real battle, offering little mercy to the Toa. This may seem harsh, but Hydraxon saw it as a necessary evil to prepare the Toa and give them the skills they'd need to complete their destiny. Other parts of their training included teamwork exercises that forced the Toa to work together. One example is an instance where Hydraxon had hidden the Toa's Kanohi in places only accessible by another member of the team, such as Gali's Kanohi Kao Kao being caught in a tree that she was unable to climb, or Lewa's Kanohi Miru getting stuck at the bottom of a lake. At first, the Toa would all split up and attempt to accomplish this task alone. However, they soon realized they would need each other to retrieve their Kanohi and complete the exercise. Exercise. The night after they'd completed this exercise, Tahu and Kopaka had left to go hike the mountains of Daxia. They were in search of answers that they knew it would be too risky to force them out of Hydraxon, for they did not know the true extent of his powers. Among these mountains was another source where Kopaka and Tahu could find the knowledge of what their team would do next, for they believed their training was complete. As the Toa hiked, bickering with one another along the way, they noticed an imposing fortress looming in the distance, one that belonged to the Order of Mata Nui. They were taken inside and brought to the Order's leader, the same being who had been there to awaken the Toa Mata. Like their sister Gali, she wore blue armor that indicated she was a Toa of Water, a Toa of Water who went by the name of Helrix. She informed Tahu and Kopaka that they were ready to become defenders of the Matoran universe, but warned them that the life of a hero was in all fun and games, for it shall acquire a price from those who seek it out. Several months later, the Toa Mata would be called to the core of the universe, otherwise known as Karda Nui. In the core, they would defend its residence, the Avmatorn, from sentient lightning creatures called the Avoka. For a time, the Avmatorn had figured that Cardanui was simply prone to violent lightning storms. However, after the deaths of several villagers, they soon realized the true nature of these creatures, who the Avmatorn had created to help prepare the core for Mata Nui's awakening. Throughout their months in the core, the Toa Mata would befriend the Avmatorn they protected, and also become curious about a strange spherical structure that lurked in the horizon. The Kodrix, as they called it, was an enigma to the Toa and Matoran, but Tahu and Kopaka had a unique knowledge of its purpose, all thanks to their earlier meeting with Toa Helrix. The Toa had chosen to keep it a secret from the rest of their team, since for now, their main focus would be evacuating the Avmatoran from the core and holding back the onslaught of Avoka. Months later, the last of the Avoka were defeated, and the Avmatoran had packed their bags and were ready to leave this realm behind. One Matoran in particular was an odd to tell what they could accomplish, wanting someday to be just like them. Let's just say he'll be important later. Now that their job was done, it was finally time for the Toa Mata to uncover what the mysterious Kodrex was really about. Toa placed his hand on the entrance door and it slid open to reveal a massive chamber sitting inside that contained six Toa canisters. The Toa quickly started to piece together what this all was, but their suspicions weren't confirmed until the first of the energy storms began. Tahu and Kopaka had kept the burden of this knowledge under lock and key for months now, and it was finally time for them to explain. While the energy storms raged outside the Kodrex, the Toa would lie asleep in these canisters until the day they would be needed. While the rest of the universe would progress and go around them, the Toa Mata would be asleep for all of it. 
the memories of Daxia, Helrix, Hydraxon, Cardanui would all be lost to time. Millennia later, the Great Cataclysm would send Mata Nui into a deep slumber and cause mass disruption across the universe. The Toa Mata would be sent into action just as planned, but the system would malfunction, sending their canisters up into the seas of Aqua Magna. There, they would drift aimlessly until they washed up on the shores of Mata Nui, rebuild their decayed bodies, and begin battling the dark forces of Makuta to restore Mata Nui. As you can imagine, the Toa Mata would be key in the fight to save Mata Nui, but tales of this journey will have to wait for another day. The Toa Mata are your typical Toa team in the sense that they're comprised of six members who all control one of the six main elements. Let's go through and take a look at each one. First, there's the hot-headed yet courageous Tahu, Toa of Fire. Upon their awakening on Daxia, Tahu was appointed as the leader of the Toa Mata, however his teammates have been known to question this choice rather often. Tahu wears a great Kanoe Hao, the mask of shield and wields a flame sword. Next is Gali, Toa of Water, the only female member of the team who is known to prioritize teamwork and unity above all else. Her weapons are a pair of hooks, and she wears a great Kanoe Kao Kao, the mask of water breathing. The team's happy-go-lucky Toa of Air Lewa is known for his positive attitude, though his dislike towards the element of water led to a friendly rivalry between him and his sister Gali. He wields an axe and wears a great Kanoe Miru, the mask of levitation. Then there's Kopaka, powerful Toa of Ice. As his element would suggest, Kopaka is cold and calculating, often preferring to work alone than to get held back by his team. Kopaka carries a sword and shield, and wears a great Kanoe Akaku, the mask of X-ray vision. Onua Toa of Earth is the backbone of the Toa Mata. With his steady presence and vast wisdom, he's the glue that keeps the team together. Onua uses his sharp claws for weapons, and wears a great Kanoe Bakari, the mask of strength. Last, but definitely not least, is the fast and friendly Pohatu, Toa of Stone. He uses his feet and the stones around him as his Toa tools, and Pohatu also wears a great Kanoe Kakama, the Mask of Speed. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the Toa Mata are perhaps the most famous Toa team in the Bionicle universe, so it was only a matter of time until I'd covered them in this series. Do you have a favorite member, or are you someone who enjoys all six of them equally? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you're interested in learning more about the Toa Mata or any other part of the Bonacle story, then make sure to subscribe so you get notified whenever I release new videos. As always, you can leave any suggestions of what I should do next in the comment section, since it helps me in figuring out what you guys would like to see. That's going to be all for this episode of Bonacle Lore Explained, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Did you enjoy the video? Then do your duty and give it a like. Also, if you're feeling generous, then why not embrace Unity and subscribe for more content just like this. If you've already done those things, then achieve your destiny by joining my Discord server linked in the description. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.